Okay, um, I would like to kick off this open house. Uh, my name is Kate Orff. I am the director of the MSAU Day or Urban Design Program. And uh, we are just very, very happy to uh, have you all with us today. Normally, uh, probably sort of pre-pandemic, we would be having, um, we'd be on this fourth floor of the building that you see here, which is Avery Hall, the home of uh, Columbia GSAP, and, um, and be sort of taking you through the different classes that are in session. And um, you can tour the amazing Avery Architectural Library, which is this arched space at the ground floor of, of Avery Hall, which is a sort of a library that is second to none in terms of a place to be and a place to study. And um, uh, so we're going to, in lieu of that, give you a kind of a, a virtual introduction to the program. And I would just ask if you're joining now, if you would go on mute so that we can uh, proceed. So um, we will begin. Um, so we are, uh, if you haven't seen our website, it is located here at the bottom, arch.columbia.edu, M-S-A-U-D. And um, hopefully you've uh, had a chance to peruse the website and to look at uh, our mission, our, our kind of pedagogical goals, our, our vision for the program, um, and et cetera. Another way that you can learn more about AUD once we finish this, um, uh, this session would be to uh, look us up on Twitter, which is on the lower left at where handle is at ClumUD and an Instagram at GSAP underscore AUD. So um, you probably are aware of that, plus the GSAP's regular Instagram feed. We really just highlight some student work and some student projects on the, um, on the Instagram feed here. We are a post-professional degree program. And uh, so uh, we're very happy uh, to have an incredible, uh, very global group of students. And, uh, and so today, our goal is to simply welcome you and just um, we're very pleased that you're interested in the urban design program. We're going to give you an overview of the program in about 40 minutes time, and then we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. Also, I believe that you have received uh, um, uh, some links from the admissions office. So after we uh, conclude here, we would encourage you to you know, visit some other spaces uh, in Avery, visit some uh, uh, you know, the uh, other classes that are in session, studio that is in session around. So you get a sense of, of the kinds of classes you might be taking if you were to matriculate here. So speaking to you today, um, uh, me, Kate Orff, uh, that's me on the left, and my email is ko2111, and also David Smiley, who is the assistant director. David, can you say hello? Hello, everyone. We're um, glad you're here, and we're uh, happy to uh, tell you what's going on, what we like to do, and what we expect of you. And um, if you have any questions anytime, put it in the chat or email either of us. Uh, we wanna get as much information to you as possible. Um, we look forward to uh, talking with you or Zooming with you now and in the future. See you in a minute. Great. Okay, so we're still admitting some students as they're coming, coming through. But again, um, here is a snapshot of, of Avery Hall. This will be your you know, your building and the urban design studio is both in, in Avery and in terms of our classrooms and also in Fairweather where we have a very large, generous uh, light filled studio um, that has been renovated two years ago with current, uh, you know, equipment and, and a really, really nice space. Uh, so we, we emphasize this because, you know, even though you would be joining the urban design program, uh, you will really be part a Columbia student at large. And so in addition to all of the lectures and, you know, events and, and seminars, etc, that are accessible to you as a GSAP student, which is Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation, uh, you also really have access to the Columbia campus writ large. And so there's always a concert or 
uh, you know, a lecture in the Global Thought Program, or you know that. So you you will really have access to quite an expanded you know realm of of intellectual uh, work. Interestingly, too, um, as you may know, uh, Columbia has started the Climate School, which is a school like no other, which is really focusing Columbia's efforts around climate. So it's quite an exciting time to be uh, at Columbia in general. Uh, our program office is on the fourth floor. So if you were to visit, you could come see us on the fourth floor, 411. Um, and a quick kind of snapshot of, of our program. So we are an urban design program. This is not planning and is not architecture. Rather, it is an urban design program. So that is a design, fairly a design intensive uh, curriculum. This is an example of a pinup. Uh, you can see here in Avery Hall in one of those rooms uh, that uh, I just showed you. And uh, this is essentially how we work. Uh, students work together in teams, sometimes of three, and in, in many cases in teams in three, um, and we have very intensive um, a design process and pinup throughout the, the, the three semesters that you would be joining us. Um, it is a one-year uh, calendar program that consists of three semesters. So this is a view of a final semester project um, that also includes a video and other, other elements. Um, and uh, so just to note that um, uh, it is a design oriented program, not necessarily policy uh, uh, in the term in terms of planning. Um, um, but we do study really the design of large scale urban systems and cities of the future. So uh, it is quite a different uh, concept uh, from of design and we we kind of very have a very different methodology than say a traditional architecture program. The, the, the methodology is quite exploratory. We look in an expansive context at urban at cities and their regions. And uh, we look at broad questions of infrastructure, policy, economics, uh, social justice and ecosystems, but really kind of tie them very directly to uh, an urban space. And uh, so we, we, we sort of toggle back and forth between systems and, and spaces, right? So we look systematically, but we try to scale that to sort of spatial design. So this is an example of uh, an end of year show from some years back. You can see someone in the graduate school uh, in uh, their cap and gown there. This is a sort of a celebratory party that we have to welcome parents and friends of students. And we usually make an exhibition. Uh, since the global pandemic has impacted all facets of, of education and, and simply, I, I don't know if impact is the word, I would say use the word changed all facets of the education. We um, have uh, operated uh, incredibly sort of uh, nimbly, I would say, spanning uh, both um, online um, uh, teaching elements with in-person elements. However, I wanted to emphasize that our entire uh, studio is in person now and masked and all working together. Um, we're in why I say hybrid is because Columbia, like almost every institution in the Northeast, also um, has um, cannot allow outside visitors, which is why we cannot welcome you into the doors of Avery Hall. So when we do have, you know, we have such a global reach and, and set of, of colleagues who we invite for um, online uh, for in, uh, reviews, etc. So we've been doing some, in some cases, reviews online and kind of coupling online and high and, and in person elements, for example. I just want to add one thing uh -huh. to that is if you go back to that um, zoom image, Kate, uh -huh. <clears throat> it's really important, uh, despite the virus and the tragedies that are entailed in it, we've learned a lot about communication, about different ways to communicate using Miro and other softwares and videos and um, and it's not going to go away. So we're actually we're very pleased to have learned new ways to conduct our research and our collaborations. I just wanted to throw that, add that bit. Great. Um, so let's see. So let's go to the next slide. And so now I'm going to give you a little bit of um, a quick overview of the pedagogical goals and the program structure. 
Um, I spoke a little bit about um, our desire to uh, kind of um, engage all of you in these broad, broad questions about the future of the world, cities, and uh, the role of urban design as a kind of active sort of agent for change. And urban design is just an incredible program because um, if you're on this call and uh, you're probably aware, um, you know, students come with a background uh, in architecture or landscape architecture or have a bachelor's degree in one of these subjects. But And what it means is that we have an incredible amount of space to be experimental and to, to really sort of focus in on the true questions at hand. So we have a very flexible curriculum and can really kind of cut uh, at the, the, the um, you know, the core of the, the challenges facing the world today. So, um, and how we do that is uh, by very carefully sequencing and combining seminars and studios about uh, these, these broader questions. And, and we have focused um, uh, in a very intensive way in the past, say, seven years on issues of social justice and issues of climate and equity, uh, so um, and, and climate change and climate resilience. So, and you'll see this uh, as we move through uh, the rest of the, the you know the description. So, as a MSAUD student, you would be taking a series of three studios, and you would have many options for seminars that you would take. And together, these these combine to to kind of create a kind of unique and special program for you. For example, if you're truly interested in issues of housing, we have multiple seminars on housing that are available to you. If you're interested in ecosystems or um, uh, coastal uh, environments, we have seminars for that. So although we're all together in the studio, the seminars are a chance for you to really kind of sharpen, refine your individual uh, learning preferences. So first, uh, we'll give you a walk through the studio curriculum because it is a studio based um, uh, program and we have uh, sort of perfected over or we're constantly perfecting, I would say, the, the, the sequence and the content of these three studios and they're sequenced in, in this way um, at, upon joining uh, the program in June, usually around June 1st, uh, you would be uh, together in a studio on New York City. And New York City is our, our learning laboratory. It's a city that we all know and love very well. And uh, in fact, your professor, Sagi, uh, is a um, has been uh, is not only a graduate of the urban design program, but essentially is uh, one of the sort of the top officials in uh, New York City planning office. So the city, the first semester is very focused on that uh, scale of the five boroughs of New York City. And, you know, although it's New York focused, it's incredible learning opportunity for cities around the world, how they're organized, how urban design happens, how projects get stalled or, or don't, uh, what are the, the pressures of development relative to um, equity, et cetera. The second semester, which you would be kind of commencing in uh, September and which is happening now. So if you are to uh, jump over and look at the uh, this afternoon uh, at Professor Emmanuel Admasu's uh, 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 studio, you'd be studying the urbanized region. And that's really the core of semester two. Well, more on that in a minute. And then your third and final semester is more global in, in reach and in uh, uh, the conversation really turns to uh, more global systems. Uh, and that includes, you know, the, the, the sort of uh, economics of um, uh, globalization that looks at uh, uh, environmental ecosystem, you know, ecosystems and environmental systems at a global scale, um, and um, and we travel to uh, cities around the world and develop this comparable compar compar comparative context. Uh, David, I'll turn it over to you to speak a little bit about Studio One. Hi, everybody. Um... Studio One, which is the summer semester, starts about June 1st. And um, it deals with <clears throat> New York City neighborhoods or the concept of a neighborhood. How is it um, made? How is it changed? How is it affected by policy and ecology? Oh, and I must also uh, admit that we actually have jumped the rivers and we um, have 
included New Jersey uh, periodically in our studies. So we're the metro area as much as New York City neighborhoods. And um, <clears throat> you will walk the neighborhoods, you will meet people, you will interview people, you will participate in local organizations. Our goal is really for you to understand and to be able to document and discuss at a, at a, at a kind of very local level um, challenges and opportunities uh, related to um, health, ecology, social justice, uh, even climate change, because they do have climate change will have very local effects as well as global effects. And um, it's a chance for you to meet your peers and get to know how different people work. Uh, you will be working in groups so that you will be able to stroll the city <clears throat> um, in the company of others. And uh, this is an instance about two years ago uh, of a review. This is a recent photo of uh, a neighborhood on the northern tip of uh, Manhattan, where or, I'm sorry, in, in, in the Bronx, where students were out masked um, and, and getting to know a particular neighborhood. So um, <clears throat> the great thing about the summer semester is the weather's good. And you, uh, since things seem to be going well with the coronavirus, will be able to uh, see New York and experience uh, all sorts of ways that New York is amazing, both in the studio and in the seminars that have to deal with video making and interview techniques and uh, mapping techniques. And really um, the summer is a kind of introduction to the tools that we use. So you'll get here in the summer and you will have an intense semester because the rest of the, the campus actually, Columbia is very quiet. So you'll be able to focus on these few classes and really learn how to walk the city and how to document the city and how to represent and learn to talk to different people around the city. Um, everybody comes away from the summer um, kind of uh, thrilled to, to have really learned New York and, and, and been able to become comfortable in New York City and New Jersey if, you, if we cross the river um, and, and um, get a sense that when we talk about urban design, we don't just talk about cities, we're talking about neighborhoods, we talk about regional ecologies, we talk about climate change as well. I was just going to add too that um, your entire summer curriculum is is coordinated. So it consists of a cluster of classes uh, that include the studio class that include software. So um, just at, you know, normally there's a lot of questions around software, like what do I need to know and how much do I need to know. But what we do is when you come in, uh, we have a very extensive survey. So essentially we meet you wherever you are relative to your ability to use software like GIS or AutoCAD or Rhino um, uh, or the Adobe Suite, et cetera. So if you're quite advanced in GIS, you know, you might, um, someone will, you know, we'd be able, we're able to sort of adjust that. But essentially this summer is a fantastic sort of what we would call like tools, tools and techniques building time. So in addition to, you know, that being out in the city and really learning and, and learning learning New York back and forth, um, you will really kind of all be essentially sort of like level set, if you will, relative to urban theory, uh, relative to um, digital technologies and tools, relative to um, a sort of a signature course that we offer, which is called Reading New York Urbanism, and uh, relative to you know studio and, and um, uh, um, exploratory propositional design techniques, so it's really quite a powerhouse uh, uh, team, faculty, and and a great way to sort of meet each other. Great. So in the fall semester. Um, the first thing we should note is that after your summer of uh, mostly a kind of given set of classes where you learn the kind of the basics and the tools um, in the second and third semesters, you have a lot more freedom to take classes across the university or in elsewhere at the Graduate School of Architecture. So um, <clears throat> Studio 2 uh, is about regions and uh, what we might call the urbanization of the region where development is taking place um, in various forms. And so we look at land and property exchange, uh, ecological issues, and we really <clears throat> connect with, um, for a number of years, we've been looking uh, north of New York and the Hudson Valley. 
this year currently we're, we're uh, working in Atlanta, another um, regionalized um, uh, kind of uh, urban armature. And <clears throat> we look at, um, in the Hudson Valley, which we did for over five years, we looked at we this publication from five years of studios, it's called Justice in Place, where we looked at social justice and agriculture and culture and uh, um, the prison and, and the incarceration systems, economics, environment and health. We, we looked at some of the stressed communities in the Hudson Valley over a number of years, worked with local organizations and kind of looked at how design could uh, change things, um, introduce new ways of um, helping people in the valley, help, helping people understand and helping organizations and municipal level politics understand how change can be planned for and designed for. So um, we uh, also spent the last two years combining our regional studios uh, with uh, the Green New Deal and the climate crisis. And so we shifted a little bit towards the agenda of the Green New Deal and, and trying to uh, use it as a, as a device to help us think, um, not accepting it point blank, but really stretching our capacity to look at how um, social life um, uh, and, and community growth and community health could be affected through a, a design position that takes uh, climate change and uh, a new way of, of of acting in the environment. And so we did that for two years um, in, in various towns in the Hudson Valley. And so finally, <clears throat> uh, we, we made a big switch this year. We have a, a, a very great new professor in the urban design program, Emmanuel Admasu. Um, and he's joined us <clears throat> and um, shifted our regional view this semester to um, city and region of Atlanta. And he is looking at uh, social and racial justice. He's looking at the question of property and the history of property as a device of exclusion and a device of uh, capital accumulation, uh, which unfairly treats um, some over others. So he's looking at both historically um, and our policy set of questions, but also looking at how to participate with neighborhood groups to engage with people on the ground and to rethink how uh, 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 the role of property as a kind of device that could change urban design if we rethink the question of property, of ownership, of decision-making processes that have been affected by racist and, and class-based um, uh, institutions and uh, governmental regulations. And as you see in the bottom of this image, going back to the very planning of a lot of cities. Uh, Savannah <clears throat> being an ancient example where property became a form of uh, colonization and, and drastic change. And then the image above was the, <clears throat> the, the Homeowner Loan Corporation 1930s in the US, which codified racial exclusion into the very boundaries and, and edges of cities and, and neighborhoods. Uh, so we've really taken on the notion <clears throat> of um, of how the land and the organization of land is very much a part of the experience of place over time in very unequal and very um, poorly distributed ways. So the students are currently working through um, <clears throat> a system of sampling and, and site finding where they're looking at the histories and current conditions of different neighborhoods and uh, different way, different organizations trying to make change in housing and in open space and in public health and uh, we're very excited about this uh, kind of expansion of what we call the regional examination because no city exists outside of a, a very broad reach um, into uh, a regional ecology as well as a regional social ecology. And so we're very happy to, to be making this jump and um, hopefully um, uh, later in the semester we can have some more open reviews. Great. Oh, and I was just add, uh, I would, ahead, I would one thing, which is that um, although, you know, I, and I, this um, studio is focused on the history of, of Atlanta, what's fascinating, and, and we, we're aware in that the urban design program is often quite an international mix. There are some years where we have students from, I think, 25 different <laughs> countries, um, but that 
I think wherever you choose to live or practice, whether it's in the US or abroad, all of these lessons that, that David just described are, are deeply relevant in terms of uh, their ability to be thought through and transformed and kind of translated uh, in, into in, in over space and time because the principles that Emmanuel are teaching are, are just very broadly relevant right now. Yes, absolutely. It's um, one of the key questions is being an international program. We have to recognize all of us, you and, and us, that uh, exclusion and uh, property and uh, inequality are global problems. Um, in America, race has emerged as a kind of, or been revealed as a, a, a structural problem for, for practically all of our history. And we expect that when you um, kind of learn about how uh, things work uh, through our, our program, you will be able to see in your own places of origin or your own homes or wherever you move to, that uh, inequality is uh, a kind of constant constant tension, sometimes overcome, sometimes a challenge. Um, um, we expect everyone to really take that to heart, no matter where you're from or where you intend to be. Great, and so if you were to uh, join, I think you, we were provided the links to, I think uh, Professor Edmasu is having a review today, correct, David? So yes. I think um, everyone on this call should have gotten a link for that. If not, we can um, put that in the chat after we stop sharing the screen. Great. Okay, so the third uh, of the three semester uh, sequence is really a studio focused on the global frame and issues um, touched upon in this third and final semester include climate, water, informality, ecosystems, resilience, and social capital. Again, these are all team taught studios. So uh, even though I am the coordinator of this studio, we have literally some of the best and most transformative individuals and urban designers uh, um, throughout uh, uh, in the United States teaching uh, on our teaching team. For example, this is Gita Mehta uh, uh, to my left. Thaddeus Palowski, Gita's expertise is in social capital and informality. Thaddeus's expertise is in disaster resilience, urban and, and planning and architecture. Um, we have uh, Adriana Chavez, whose expertise is sort of water and global cities. And then we have uh, Dilip Dakuna, who uh, has written uh, probably, I think, five or six books on um, uh, uh, sort of water and uh, kind of post-colonial futures. So this is just an example of a study trip. This was in Pune, India, which is, you know, what we do is uh, we plan a, a week long trip. Um, uh, if not sometimes 10 days, uh, we interview, um, you know, uh, significant individuals like the mayor or the planning director, in this case, a leader of a, an activist group. Um, we uh, develop, we have a, a sort of a, on-site charrette that we in, often work with students from uh, schools on the ground. For example, when we were in Kanta, Vietnam, we worked with Kanta University students, et cetera. When we were in Mozambique, we, we worked with um, um, Eduardo Jelen students, et cetera. So um, these slides, these images represent some of the more recent past studios. And you can tell that they are they range uh, from you know, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, several sites in India, Madurai, Pune, Varanasi, and Calcutta, uh, um, and Kanta in Vietnam, and then two sites in Jordan, Amman, and Aqaba. Of course, all uh, experiencing the challenges of climate and water and equity differently. Uh, but what's been so wonderful is that over time, we've been able to kind of develop a comparative context in which we sort of that we learn from all of these cities. And then in the end, cities also learn from, from each other. Here are just some snapshots of um, uh, Amman, uh, where, you know, just gives you a sense of what we're looking at. Agriculture on the top right, new infrastructure, uh, the bottom two slides of water pipes and uh, massive road building, uh, questions of housing. And for example, uh, when we were in Jordan, uh, our students uh, collaborated to develop 
a large scale map of failing water infrastructure uh, across the entire uh, country and began to integrate uh, this kind of map of, of obsolescence uh, into their design projects. And then upon returning to New York City, uh, students work in different groups uh, to continue the collaboration in many cases with the on-site students that they were working with and develop projects that sort of span that uh, system scale down to scales of spaces. So this was a, 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 a very, you know, one tiny piece of one, a very elaborate board around the redesign of a public space uh, relative to those principles. More recently, uh, we've taken students uh, to uh, along uh, the, the Great Rift Valley, uh, and uh, we, in one year, took students to three different sites. You don't go to all three, you would select one. This travel is fully paid by Columbia as part of a Kinney Award. So uh, the trip, you receive a stipend, and so it is of no cost to you to travel. And uh, the sites in this case were to Yafo, Addis Ababa and Bera, Mozambique. Uh, and at, at the end of the q and I'll put some links to some of this work in the chat. So um, we uh, visited these three sites and then uh, they were in dialogue with each other in the sense that we had faculty and um, students sort of interacting across a broader spectrum. And actually this work is being currently exhibited in the Seoul Biennale of Architecture and Urbanism. So if there's anyone in Korea on this uh, call, please let us know and, and go uh, to see this exhibition. More recently, uh, we were unable to travel due to COVID restrictions, uh, but we were able to uh, do this uh, really incredible studio called Envisioning the Mississippi as a Living River in partnership with the National Wildlife Foundation and the Walton Family Foundation and a number of other foundations uh, uh, in the United States. So uh, we took the opportunity of uh, no travel to really think big and broadly about the American landscapes and, and what we need to do. So we uh, have a very elaborate and, and thoughtful um, uh, story map here that goes through Mississippi Portrait with photography depicts the, the studio-wide design vision, and then also all of the student work is categorized into these spatial, division, di, uh, spatial visions. So at the scale of the entire country, <laughs> uh, we developed um, uh, 11 projects at 11 sites. And we also had uh, Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative and met with the mayors of these various towns. So this is just an example of student work at St. Genevieve, um, and uh, so I can uh, assure you that uh, uh, whatever the situation is, if we are able to travel, we will travel to uh, a very, very exciting place. Uh, and it will be a very, very well coordinated and prepared uh, study trip. And if we are not able to travel, uh, you receive that stipend uh, anyway. Um, and uh, we will devise a, a non-travel option. My feeling is, as I imagine you all are thinking, is that we will be able to travel in uh, 2023. That is to be determined. Uh, we're all in the same boat. Every university across the board are, are in lockstep with their policies. And so we will be in lockstep with our university directives. David, I'll turn it back to you to talk about seminars. <clears throat> okay. Um, while studio typically um, takes up 25 hours a day of your life, um, turns out that we also um, make room for seminars of different types, both within our program at the GSAP as a whole and even across the university. Um, you need to take one seminar each of the fall and spring semesters. Um, and <clears throat> They're all very exciting and you'll have lots of, of choices. Um, we want you to understand the seminar as different kinds of research, looking at different kinds of places, looking at different kinds of actors and processes, all kind of in conflict in one way or another, both historically and uh, in the present and for the foreseeable future. And the seminars are small, anywhere from 10 to 20 students usually. And 
we um, you'll have choices and you'll rank your choices and you'll get usually first or second choice. And there's different topics uh, related to, um, you know, kinds of your own interests from ecology to public space, to design urban design tools and, and forms, to human rights, uh, to resilience, um, to typologies and changing typologies, and even to the discipline of urban design itself and the problems it encounters as a kind of practice. Um, we, um, <clears throat> we pride ourselves on, on having a really good faculty student relationships in these seminars. Uh, they're very intensive where you can be, if you wanna be writing a traditional paper, you can. If you wanna be doing research in archives, you can. If you wanna do a kind of speculative design projects, some professors will allow that. Um, you know, we have obviously themes and syllabi and all that, but we really want you to find the kind of research that works for you with respect to concerns you have um, in, in the world today. Um, <clears throat> uh, next, please. Yep. Um, so if you can make this out, it's not great, but there, each seminar has a kind of different theme. Um, on the left, my seminar that deals with public space has a kind of a series of rhetorics and practices. Um, uh, on the right, uh, it's called Urban Design in the Wild, where the professor uh, actually kind of looks at conflicts uh, in New York City neighborhoods and, and metropolitan area neighborhoods to see how urban design works when it meets with professionals and community organizations and all sorts of other um, conflicts and how they're resolved or not. Um, uh, on the lower right, I'm sorry, lower left is uh, Difference and Design taught by uh, Justin Moore. Um, basically, essentially um, looking uh, at uh, race and other forms of exclusion in uh, various American cities and towns where you would be uh, inventing a kind of research project um, demonstrating how these things have been dealt with historically, but also at the present uh, and also looking ahead. And finally, on the, the lower right uh, class called Recombinant Urbanism taught by Graham Shane who's an author of one of the great books on urban design since 1945, which we urge you to check out. Um, he looks um, globally at how different cities um, have come to be. So he takes a historical look at cities with students and they make really great uh, GIFs and videos about how cities are have combined historically um, with different kinds of elements, with different kinds of spaces. Um, and different kinds of political and eco ecological questions. So these are, are just uh, four of uh, the different, of the variety. Kate uh, also teaches a series of seminars on ecology mm -hmm. and um, ecological politics and resilience. And right, I'll just uh, add that real quick, my, my most recent yeah. seminar was called Resilience landscape, uh, resilient landscapes, and uh, we focused on looking at uh, climate change and indigenous landscapes and communities around the globe. So, um, and it culminated in an event called "Tidal Communities Speaks: The Experience of Underserved and Indigenous Communities uh, uh, Facing the Future." So, um, and I can put a, 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 a link to that in the chat. So that has to do much more with sort of rural and smaller scale towns, but we um, engaged with the, the Shinnecock uh, in here in Eastern Long Island. We had a presentation with the Shinnecock and interaction with the Shinnecock uh, with uh, uh, um, Alaskan native villages in Shishmaref, the Gullah Geechee in, in South Carolina um, and others. So, um, Quite a, quite a moving seminar for me personally as well, learned so much. Great, and so to sort of wrap up, we're now at about 40 minutes as promised. Um, we wanted to encourage you also, um, um, in addition to the Q&A, to feel free to um, peruse the end of year show from last year. This is our a full COVID year of, uh, of, of education and the work is really fantastic and we couldn't be prouder of our, our students and our faculty. So we'll place this uh, through, but you can certainly give it a look through and uh, you'll get a sense of the kind of work that you might be uh, doing uh, were you to join the urban design program. 
And, and finally, um, Columbia in general has an amazing series of centers. I mentioned the, uh, the climate school, uh, which is in formation and just took its first uh, group of MS students. Uh, and our program is very much linked to the climate school. My seminar is co-listed with the climate school. And this center, which is based at GSAP, which I co-direct with Thaddeus Palowski, the Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes, um, has been doing uh, quite a bit of work over the past four to five years uh, in, a global, uh, in a global context. So we wanted to leave you with this uh, image of New York City. Uh, if you were to come here, this would be your, uh, your home. And I think we can close there with uh, just a statement of, you know, um, we'd be happy to take your questions and we'd encourage you to apply. Uh, and uh, if you're probably aware, but um, if you um, click on, you know, apply.gsap.columbia.edu, uh, that will take you to the online application. And there is a, a modest portfolio requirement and there is a, um, a sort of a, a statement um, required. And, um, and then the second link uh, brings you to um, tuition and financial aid uh, opportunities. We often have uh, uh, at least 10 uh, partial scholarships to, sh to, to uh, share. So I will stop sharing my screen now and uh, we will open it up for some questions or question and answers. So um, you can feel free to just put your question in the chat and we'll read it out loud uh, and go through them one at a time. Okay, I'll start with the, with the first one. Um, looking at uh, the question of a larger scale approach as well as smaller scale work, public seating or memorial design. Um, so the first thing that we say almost always, and I think it's a great question, is that um, we uh, look at all scales. We're interested in uh, students because you have an architecture background um, and you're learning the urban background as well, that every project we do, we ask for you to deal with the smallest and the largest of scales and intermediate scales. So we're very interested in that, especially since you're working in groups, different people can develop different specializations within that. So um, benches, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, what is a, a public place without a bench uh, or the lack of benches would be a notable missing public, public space question. Um, but yes, we were very much interested in the politics and design questions with large and all scales across all scales. And I see and actually, across time oh, as well. Yeah, Sorry. across okay. time. I was just going to note that I see a future question a little bit further down, which is also talking about architecture. And uh, absolutely, I mean, every um, you know, um, you know, we have groups uh, that uh, completely focus on new architectural interventions or the design of housing uh, or other other elements of the urban fabric. So, um, in addition to larger scale sort of systemic and kind of landscape driven projects, we also, um, you know, also uh, sort of um, introduce uh, architecture and uh, and housing as elements that we're also able to uh, we're also able to give feedback on and promulgate. And I think the difference between architecture and urban design is always that architecture isn't assumed to be the answer. It's assumed to be sort of part of a mix of economics, engagement, uh, uh, landscape, and other kind of thought. So if you were taking an architecture studio, it might be like, okay, we're designing the U.S. Embassy in uh, Korea, you know, or something, and that would be an, an architectural, you know, response would be sort of presupposed. But I would just say, in urban design, we don't presuppose architecture as the sole response to a design or an urban question. I think another way to put that is that <clears throat> um, we spend a lot of time on research that goes to water systems and ecological systems, weather patterns, uh, social, um, social assistance or lack thereof. I mean, we, we, we express um, 
our interests through regionalization of research. And so we really ask you to be able to understand uh, what's at stake at a very, very grand scale and a kind of an extensive reach. Um, at the same time, uh, someone's asking, what about architectural projects? Do, do we get to do buildings? <laughs> And I would say it's, it's kind of up to you and who you're working with and the kind of questions you're asking. We encourage as much detail as possible. Um, and it's really a decision that you would need to make with your critics and with your collaborators to see what's important about that. Sometimes um, it's more important to design a, a kind of community-based drainage system than it is to design a building or both. Uh, in urban design, which we really should call something else, but we are stuck with the term urban design because we design landscapes and we're interested in um, you know, all sorts of infrastructures. So it might be that you design a very uh, refined and developed um, community infrastructure that deals with water or waste or how to um, save water or how to redirect sun. I mean, these are all questions that are facing the planet urban, regional, desert, agricultural. Um, and yes, there might be the occasional building, yes. <laughs> it's, it's your call. Absolutely. Uh, we do have a question about the, um, the degree. Um, and David, I think maybe it says, is this a NAB accredited program? So the urban design program is a post-professional degree program. And this means that if you're applying to the program, that you have a degree which qualifies you to sit for licensure in either architecture or landscape architecture. So um, it is not in and of itself providing accreditation. Um, and uh, so just wanted to be clear on that. Anything else to add there, David? Another way to put that is you have to come, if you're in the US, from a NAB accredited program. So, um, so you already need a degree from a uh, NAB accredited program that allows you to be to what we say sit for the exam. Um, you don't have to have taken the exam, but you have to have come from a program that prepares you to sit for the exam. Now, other countries, you'll have to just ask us independently uh, because there are lots of different countries with different ways of judging. Uh, what is an architect and in professional terms. And we do our best to, to go by the countries of your origin where you got your degree from to make sure that our program is right for you, both personally, but also legally. Yeah, I would also just add, we didn't mention this, but um, the, the, our program is also a STEM designated program. So if you are uh, coming from non-US context, uh, it is STEM designated and you have a, a three-year uh, visa, which is very exciting for many. Okay. Let's see. Um, a really good question. Um, are most of the applicants coming straight from undergrad? I would say a majority are, but we recommend um, that you actually get a job if you can and work for a year. A good uh, a good chunk of our students um, were, have worked for a year or two years, even three or four years. And it's a really great addition to the studio environment when you have people who are fresh from a research and design mentality to those who've been in the professional world and understand some of the other kinds of questions that emerge in offices and practices. So it's a good mix. Um, and uh, we, we just want to put together a good class. Um, so uh, it's, like I say, it's usually a mix and we strive to keep it a mix. Um, and it's usually a great challenge because we put people in, you know, we encourage you to make groups and collaborate. Sometimes you'll, a partner will have been someone in an office for a few years and they're looking to you for some things, you're looking to them for other things. And so there's a real dynamism and it really works really well. Um, someone asks about working full-time, uh, that's something that, you should take up with with Kate or I and more specifically um, we would prefer if you did not work except perhaps on campus if necessary but we understand uh, that everybody has different needs but um, it's it's only a one-year program and one of the reasons that the program was shortened from four semesters to three 
uh, continuous semesters was to accommodate a kind of uh, more economic reality that, that most people have. So we, we hope that you can, you can make that work. Great. Yeah, and I, I nothing more really to add on that. And but all I would say is, um, the the program is intensive and it is one calendar year, and so it was specifically, you know, contained so that when you're here, you are really a hundred percent at Columbia, and in the end, it really comes out so that. If you work well while you're here, you you know you were able to truly thrive uh, uh, once you graduate. And my only you know there's no you know my, my what I have seen personally uh, being in this uh, uh, working in this program for for decades now is that um, you know you really get in get out what you put in right. So if you are stretched thin and your group needs to meet and you're working on a you know competition for another firm, then it just becomes more difficult to coordinate. So my, my two senses, like you are able to do anything uh, that will enable you to thrive personally, but um, I've really seen students thrive who are really 100% at Columbia, right? And that means going to lectures on Mondays. That means um, hanging out with uh, fellow students on Friday. That means, uh, you know, the, the, the full picture. Um, I think we had a question also around um, where students go after this degree. A and actually we just had um, two years ago, a great um, a convening of many of our alumni. And I think David, that if you go into the UD website and you scroll down, you will see interviews with our Columbia um, Urban Design graduates. I would say that the degree is fascinating because you can work in a practice of architecture or urban design. For example, I could name five here in the New York area, like uh, WXY, like FX Collaborative, like SOM, Bayer Blender Bell, Scape, <laughs> many other large firms that take urban design graduates. And so many of our graduates do work in so-called the private sector for um, professional architects, urban designers, or planners. Um, we also have a, 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 a graduate, Crystal Ng, who, um, who received a sort of a 40 under 40 prize, and she's, her expertise has been sustainability and housing. So as we mentioned, before, you know, how you sequence your studios and with your with your seminars really gives you a kind of a direction to, to push. Um, so in addition to the private sector, many of our students also go on to work in the public sector or like at the for the city of New York, one of our graduates is the lead planner for the city of Chicago. Uh, we have many, many graduates at the city of New York. Um, we have many graduates also who are in urban driven profits, nonprofits and NGOs globally. So that means in India, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, we have uh, the, the former, well, the director of uh, a large scale NACDO kind of transportation uh, um, uh, group, which has been, you know, at the center of the um, initiative to transform uh, large scale streets and highways into more pedestrian and public scale spaces. They are all graduates of our program. We also have graduates of our program working for UN Habitat and gradu graduates who go on to pursue PhDs uh, in planning or in PhDs in, in data and design or, or other elements. So it's quite a flexible degree. Uh, and a lot of different avenues for uh, taking that degree forward in public and private uh, realms. Yes, I think um, what's great about the fact that you will have an architecture background with an urban design specialization, um, many of our students uh, return to architectural practices um, and, and lead or work in the urban design departments. Uh, so it's a way to uh, kind of go back to a firm that they even had worked in or to go to other urban design firms that also do architecture. 
So um, it's, uh, it's very flexible because in many ways, really good firms really and large firms recognize the need for the large scale thinking of urbanism and urbanization. So we have students who um, um, in China are working for planning agencies that are dealing with huge, huge projects. Um, and then uh, they're, they're essentially, um, you know, we're all urbanists now of one sort or another. And students in South America are working for NGOs that deal with <clears throat> intervening in the urbanization process in different towns and small cities. Um, and then it's yeah. it's it's really it's really a useful um, way to enter the world at a scale where where you're dealing with some amazingly difficult issues. That's really true. I just saw a question about the age of of students, and so um, we have had older. I am fifty. <laughs> full disclosure, uh, you know, I uh, and so we are you know young at heart, but we are very experienced. And I would just say. Um, if you're an older, you know, or a student that has more work experience, um, you will probably you will do well. We've had just um, two years ago, we had a, a, a student of that age, Angus, and uh, you can speak to him uh, if you like about his experience. And I would just emphasize that it's just communication would be key, right? Because you have a certain degree of maturity and experience that is you know, different from say somebody who's 26 or 25. So as long as everyone is is in good communication, uh, that's great. But I think um, the degree is is perfectly uh, of great interest for somebody who, for example, has worked in architecture uh, for for some time and really wants to come back and sink their teeth into larger urban questions. Um, yes, one person. A few people have asked for about joint degrees, I think. Um, <clears throat> since we're a one year program, you would um, be welcome to apply for a second program if you want to do one after you complete our program. The urban planning program, for instance, does run joint degrees, but it's a two year program with a summer in between, so it has more capacity. But um, we have many students who go on to do either a real estate degree or um, a business degree, for instance, some of them uh, actually go on, as Kate said, into PhDs um, in more specialized forms of uh, global governance and urban thinking. Um, but it's really important to realize that it's three semesters. It's really intense. It goes by in a flash, as everybody will tell you. Um, and that's uh, an amazing year you're going to have. Uh, some of you will like be able to reach out and take classes in other places. And some of you will just kind of zero in and, and dig really deep. Um, but uh, think joint degree as like another degree afterwards, not, not while you're in the UD program. And you will make some amazing friendships and relationships. I do. I, I'm so glad that you said that, said that David, because I know we have to close now because some of our students want to go um, through, um, uh, but let's hit this last question, very important. What's looked at at the portfolio? You do not have to submit a portfolio of urban design work to be admitted to the urban design program. Do not worry, just put your portfolio together. We're interested in just knowing and learning about you and what you're interested in. You can have a portfolio of small scale pavilions and explain why you're interested in urban design and that will do it for us. We are not expecting you to have an urban design portfolio. Do not bear. just put together your work and uh, as it represents your creative ambitions and that's it. I would like to ask everybody to not stress out about the portfolio. In fact, so many of the portfolios look sort of generic and the same. We just want to know more about about you. And so just, you know, spend time and thinking about your statement and uh, why you want to apply. And that's that's really what we're looking for. There's a question about the admissions rate. I actually don't know the answer to that, but we do just ask, um, you know, that, um, you know, that you put it, if you have a good statement and if you have very you know positive references you have a very you know you would have a very strong chance of, of being admitted um uh, as as um you know as a student but uh, we, we want you yeah 
to, to show us your best self in whatever form that takes. Um, so, let, you know, sometimes you can put in too much stuff. So be careful. <laughs> show us what's really good about you. Um, and I will go through the chat. Kate and I will go through the chat today and um, send out a mass email response um, from the list that we have from those people who were here. So if we didn't get to your question specifically, we will get to your question. And um, feel free to keep sending questions. And um, I guess uh, we have to go. Great. So thanks everybody for participating. We really appreciate your time. And as David mentioned, um, we um, will circle back to you with, with any questions and you have his email DS210 uh, 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 if you wanna follow up directly and mine is KO2111, best to copy us both. Thanks everybody and have a fabulous afternoon.